Hello Ratbags, this is Jay Plays Games. Welcome to another Fallout 76 video. I've been doing lots of these guys because I'm passionate about it and really want to give you as much information as soon as I can find it. Today, Todd Howard has been pretty much doing damage limitation control and giving lots of information. They really are trying to reassure Fallout 76 fans or Fallout 4 fans, Fallout Universe fans, that Fallout 76 could be a game that you could pick up if you're a fan of the Fallout series. If you've been worried about the PvP aspect, this is what this video is going to clarify. They've just done an interview with IGN and in it they spoke a little bit more in depth about what to expect from PvP, player versus player. I think a lot of it is going to go down very well with people that maybe didn't want to worry about getting killed every two seconds or worried about how it's going to actually work. For survival fans, for the people that I am really hyped for and I think will enjoy this game, it may little be a little bit too soft. It's not going to be a grief and experience. PvP in Fallout 76, judging by what he said in this interview, may be optional. There may be rewards for doing it and there may be definitely a challenge for doing it and you'll get even more rewards. But from what he said during this interview, it does seem like it's very, very soft. So let's go through everything he said in this interview and then we'll talk and discuss about it. Not only that, we've got information about the fact there's going to be no NPCs whatsoever in the game. There is only going to be monsters and other players. And they're also discussing what's going to happen with the nuclear missiles, how to get them, what's going to involve, and how when you drop a nuclear missile, it's going to change the game for the good. Is there, <laughs> how to put this, like friendly fire? Are you able to injure or harm every other player in the game? We are still dialing that in. Okay. So I could sort of say where we're at with it. Okay. But we don't want this to be a griefy experience. If you want to engage in PvP, mm -hmm. we want to have some drama there. And if you don't, we want to offer you the challenge and say, hey, if you want to do this, here are the incentives. Mm -hmm. But if you don't want to, it's something you can get away from or avoid pretty easily. So in that statement there, it looking likely you're going to be able to turn PvP off. He says you can get away from it pretty easily. So normally, I would assume that would be something like you've got maybe a status. Maybe there's going to be a state that you can put yourself on, which is PvP or PvE. Maybe it'll be something that you have to decide when you join the server. There's going to be lots of questions thrown up by this. If you can change your status, if you can put yourself not as PvP, where players can actually kill and hurt you, then what's to stop you from abusing that? And any time you're doing a PvP game where you do want people to kill you or you want to go and kill players, you simply just turn it back onto that aspect afterwards. He may have been a bit odd in describing that. It definitely didn't say it was definitely going to be a case of switching it off. But he said you can get away from that very easily. Now, if you can get away from it very easily, it has to be something like an option where you can choose to turn it on. And the way that he said it's going to be a challenge, it's going to be rewarding if you do do it in a PvP setting. That to me signifies that aspect that you will be able to switch it on or off. You will be able to decide whether or not you're going to be PvP that day or you are a PvP player or PvE player. It's very up in the air. That really doesn't clear up too much, but it definitely gives hope to the people that were worried about this becoming rust. Rust is a very toxic game online, it's built just online and players do nothing but basically kill each other, ruin each other's bases and just cause a lot of trouble. One other really good aspect from what he spoke about in this was that bases won't necessarily get completely destroyed by nuclear missiles and they won't be able to get completely destroyed by players. From the way he was talking, the way he's expressed it, these settlements are going to be quite small. You're not necessarily going to be able to build huge cities. It's not going to be something bigger than what you kind of see in the videos. Can take damage from NPCs, and you saw the NPCs actually blowing away some of these buildings. But he does go on to say there's going to be a, a limit, or it's going to degrade your base, rather than full destroying your bases. But if you're not actively in the game at the moment, is your, is your home uh, at risk? No. Okay. No, so when you log off, your camp basically goes with you. Yep. So no one okay. can mess with it. And then when you log back in, again, it's even though there are servers, it, it's the player sees it serverless. And then we put your camp back. Okay. Yeah. But uh, if someone does get their hands on a nuke, that would pose a, a threat to everything you've built, I, I would have to assume. And the same thing like with the griefing, they can damage what you've built, but they can't eradicate it forever. Okay. And then you have, a, you have the ability to easily repair it. Yes. Okay. 
So, not only will you not have to worry about your bases being completely destroyed by other players or at least other nuclear missiles, you won't have to worry about being raided offline. A big component of these survival games like Ark, Conan, Rust is that you can go and attack other players' bases even when they're not on the game. Their base is always going to be on there, their creatures, their teams, whatever they've got in whatever game it is, are at risk. Now, Conan Exiles has limited windows. It has evening times in whatever region you're in and that's the only time that normally you can go and raid and destroy other bases. Ark has completely offline so you can go and raid any base in Ark Survival Evolved whenever you want. There are servers that they were thinking about implementing offline raiding only which or online raiding only which meant you can only raid when you're online but that presents other problems. People will just log off like I said at the start of the video as soon as they're getting raided oh I'll just nip off. With this aspect if the bases are going to completely disappear that is going to be really interesting. How is that going to work when people come across their an area they want to build and then maybe they can't build there because they can't see an invisible base but there's something stopping them because the server knows someone might bring their base back so no griefing while people aren't online you won't be able to destroy someone's base while they're not present and that is really interesting that's going to be really interesting to see and as you can see from the nuclear thing as well going on with that it looks like these nuclear missiles are going to change the landscape People are going to have to activate this to get the best gear or to achieve something in the game. They're going to need special materials and you can only get them special materials by activating a nuclear missile. And so when they drop, it just might be chance that you're putting it on an empty player's base, maybe to make their life a little bit harder, but it's not going to destroy them all. But of course, if you are in a radiated zone, you're going to have to move your base. You're going to have to move your items. And that's what he goes on to say as well, that you will have to move your stuff, otherwise you're going to get irradiated. So not destroying bases, not completely griefing players. I honestly don't know how that's going to go well with the hardcore survival crowds. You know, this is what I'm appealing to. This is what's got me interested in this game is having the Fallout setting with a AAA publisher behind it and then having the normal mechanics you find in survival games. But of course, there are some that are just too toxic, and griefing players is one of them aspects. So what could it be in Fallout 76? Is it going to be a case of you just deciding that, yep, I am PvE, PvP, maybe there'll be a set time limit. If you're PvP, then you'll go around, you can kill other players, you can take maybe their stuff if you see them in the wild, that's exactly how Conan has it, but you won't be able to go and just completely demolish their bases. Now to be fair, he doesn't actually say completely that players won't be able to do that to each other, but he does mention like nuclear missiles won't be doing that. So maybe there is a way for players to destroy each other's bases, but I can't really see that being a, a thing. Maybe it's going to be a case of just getting extra reward points or experience from killing other players. The challenge or the reward for that is going to be that you get to progress quicker if you are taking out other players. The rest of the interview does go on to talk about NPCs and the fact that they're not having them because they want people to see a sign saying ammo for sale and you'll know that the only person that's done that is another player. It's not going to be an NPC, it's going to be another player. So no NPCs, there's no raiders, it's going to be just players. They also said that they're going to spread it out though. You may start in a vault and there may be a couple of other people starting out with you but because there's only a few dozen players on these servers, and that's what he said, a few dozen, so that to me means no more than maybe 36, you're going to be spread all over the map. You're going to be able to go out there, and it might even take a long time to meet another player. So this idea where you're running around just griefing people, killing each other, I don't think it's going to be true at all. It's going to be a case of, really, you want to make friends with other players, because it will be easier to activate the codes for the nuclear missiles, and then you can get to the end game content to take out big, huge NPCs. Now, we're at this point where we're designing a service that will come online later where you can have your own private world mm -hmm. and also have the ability to mod it yourself, use other people's mods. That's very complicated when you get online, but it's something we're definitely committed to. We love what our fans have done modding our games, sure. and that's kind of where, you know, the life of our games have been after they're out for a while. It's, you know, a lot yeah. of people are modding yeah, and playing it yeah. that way. Now, if you caught my video that I've already done, literally on the same day as this one, I was talking about the fact that private worlds is going to be a thing and there will be no single player. As you heard him say, it's going to be a service. Now, what do you expect with a service? You expect to be charged. Online services, online subscriptions, online things that you, know, you get content are going to be a service. It is going to be a charge. This really strengthens that idea that I put forward in the first video today that 
you're not going to be just playing this game offline. It's not going to be a free content patch or a free update that just gets implemented into the game. If you want to play on your own little world with just your friends, you're going to have to pay for it. And this really does fit in into what the reason games companies are going to go for online because they've seen the money that can be made. Ark Survival Evolved has made millions through server rentals. The companies they use have also made millions. Bethesda haven't bastardized one of their beloved franchises and gone from playing a single player game to a multiplayer game just for the fun of it, just to upset fans. They're doing it because it's a business decision. It's because it's going to generate lots of money if they get it right. And they've seen how much value there is in providing a service like rentable servers or rentable worlds. So I really do expect them to announce that if you want your own private world, if you want to play this game on your own without any interaction with anyone else, you're going to have to pay a service for it. Now that sounds really shitty, it does, I ain't going to lie. I don't mind rented servers, I don't like the idea that if you want to rent a world out, but they should still definitely include some sort of offline play if they're going to do that. It seems crap that you're going to have to charge money just to play a game with just a few of your friends only. So if anyone was in any doubt about the idea of them bringing in a single player mode, I think you can really forget it. They're not a huge company based on goodwill. They are a company that wants to make money. Their single player games make a ton of money normally when they launch, but of course not many people complete them, not many people go revisit them because they're such big vast open worlds. Now yes, I know there's fanboys and there's real good fans of it that play it to death and go over it and over it again, but if you go and check some of the stats on trophies in the PlayStation and Xbox stores, about how many players have got some of the higher achievements, the end game achievements, you'll find it's a very tiny percentage. So as a games company, they want you playing their game, but they also want to make money from it. What better way than to have a subscription service where you get your own rentable server, your own rentable world, maybe you get access to put the mods onto that world any way you want, but of course you're going to have to buy it through like the creation club, or you're going to have to buy it through their store, you're going to have to pay money every single month for that privilege. Single player is definitely getting forgotten about here. If they announce something, if they really do start adding a offline play to counteract some of the negative negativity that's going to come forward, because it will, because people aren't used to this. We as survival gamers are, if you've ever played Ark, Rust, DayZ, you all know about renting your own servers. It's a huge business on PC. That's why these games companies want to take advantage of it because up until now it's usually only been these independent companies that have really done it. Battlefield is probably the only exception that has made a lot of money from private rentable servers in the past. EA Games have started looking into that more and more but then again sometimes they don't. They just go we're not doing it this time. So looks like Bethesda are going all out on maximizing how much money they can generate after the game releases so it's not just one of these single player experiences that gets forgotten about or they can't make any more money from. It's a cynical view and it's the first time I've come across something that's made me a bit negative towards Fallout 76. I would definitely don't mind them adding in a world that you can rent out if you want to play with just your friends. I'm used to that on Ark, I'm used to that on Conan. What I'm not used to though is not having the ability just to play it with at least a couple of your friends, an offline mode or uh, an online mode but only for three or four of your friends. It's a very weird, weird situation. They're going to have to tread very carefully because if they do it wrong, they're not going to attract all the brand new survival fans that they want and they're going to piss off their hardcore Fallout fans even more that won't touch the game at all. Lots of analysis is coming from me, definitely still more. We're going to talk about it in the future again. What else they're talking about there is the creatures and what's going to be happening. You're going to have things like the Mothman coming. And Mothman does look like it's going to be some sort of dragon type creature that is going to take significant, you know, beating. It's going to be almost like an end game boss from the way they're describing it. I didn't want to reveal too many details, but that's what to expect. They did say that the map is just filled and lush and life with loads of different types of creatures. All the same creatures you're used to seeing. So every creature from like previous Fallout games is more or less going to be in this one. Plus a bunch of brand new creatures. And I like that idea. I really like the idea of the world being hugely populated. Ark Survival Evolved does that better than most. In fact, it probably does that the best. With the amount of dinosaurs that run around the maps and the islands, you really do feel like at any moment you're in danger. Other games don't do it as well. Conan Exiles is the one that I've been covering most recently. It feels a bit flat. You can go ages without seeing an NPC or an enemy creature and it just gets a bit boring. So Fallout have to get that balance right as well. You don't want too many creatures that it's a real chore to do anything. But again, you want to make it interesting. 
I'm again hyped for Fallout 76. If you are too, if this has helped you maybe soften a little bit towards the fact that Fallout 76 is going to be online, I hope that's a good thing for you because I know, I understand people don't want to have to get grief or don't want change or don't want to feel like they're going to be all their progress destroyed by other players. This goes a long way to confirming that's not what they're intending. They really do want it to be a soft survival game. It's not going to be a grief in survival game. I'm Jay Plays Games. For more analysis about Fallout 76, make sure you've got notifications turned on. Make sure you're liking the video, and I'll see you, Ratbags, for another one very soon.